Hi there. Uh, I'm back again. It's Monday evening, and I'm in the shop, and I'm going to try and make this a quick one. Um, I've started um, uh, modifying the the vertical column on the uh, mill, take mill. And um, as you can see, I hope, um, I have a, a number four tapered reamer. Um, I've drilled a hole right down through the crease, the two mating surfaces. I've drilled a hole, to, uh, the smallest size, at, at this end. And I've reamed it out. I've gone in so far, um, you'll see a black a black mark on the here somewhere. Yes, just there. Um, hope you can see that. And that was as far as the drill would go when I drilled the hole. So I'm making sure that the taper is not reaching the bottom of the hole. Um, that's to allow me to ream a little bit more out if necessary. And, and so um, that's the first thing that I've done. Um, I now have to make a, a taper pin-up with a, an extractor thread on the end so that um, uh, when I tram the mill up, um, I just put the taper dowel in there and just tap it lightly to locate it. And then when I want to remove it, uh, there's a nut on the end with a thread and when you screw that nut down it withdraws the tapers. Once the taper um, uh, re releases it just comes out. It's not like a... it's much better than a, a straight dowel. So um, that's where I've got there. Now I'm gonna... I'm just gonna add a little bit of trivia here for one of my readers who uh, asked me about the coolant that I use and I hope hope that he can see it there. Now this was white. It was as white as that. Okay. And that's how it comes out of the bottle. But after it's settled for some time it then turns into a, a like an oily oily liquid. If you can see that, I hope you can. Um, I don't think this works, does it? No, I've got nothing in there. Um, yeah, it's just there. I put it on the the surface, and if you can see, it's it's like oily, and that's what I like about it because um, with other coolants, if there's too much moisture or, or water in the in the solution. Um, it can rust machines, especially cast iron uh, tables. I mean, I don't have to worry about it on the mill because it's all anodized uh, aluminium. So now I'm going to go over to the lathe where I have um, started uh, building a tapered dowel. And I'll show you what I'm up to. If I can get this in here. Come on. Uh, got it round the wrong way. Uh, no, that's right. That should be. Yeah, that should be it. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I'll spin that round there. And as you can see, I hope. Um, I have, where are we? Get a pen. I have, uh, a, um, a die holder, um, that slides the normal kind of thing. I built this, well, oh, many years ago, uh, when I had my, uh, Drummond M-Type. So I'm... Um, that's one of the reasons I put a, a, a Morse taper in this new quill on the tailstock. Um, so, 
anyway I've I put a thread I hope you can see this I'll move that this way a little bit and zoom in on there so uh, what I've done is uh, I found a piece of um, a KE 970 which is a uh, tool steel um, a die uh, steel um, and we used a lot of it uh, when I was working in England uh, and we used uh, KE 6, 672 and 970 uh, the 672 we used for the dies and any forming tools that we had to make was 970 KE 970 um, so I got a little bit of stock of this this was a half inch diameter when I started um, I've just this this minute to uh, put the thread on the end that's a quarter uh, 26 I don't have any uh, uh, American dies don't have very many of that of that kind uh, U the US stuff so I use uh, BSF and sometimes Whitworth and BA that's the kind of stuff that I use um, I just use whatever I've got if, if I can so that's a uh, it's a quarter inch diameter, uh, 26 BSF. So I'm going to make a, a nut because um, I have the tap, and uh, I'm going to make a nut to fit on there from brass uh, for extracting. And uh, I've turned this down to uh, three sixteenths, a uh, five sixteenths diameter. It's a, a short piece, and that's where I'm going to put the taper on. I'll see if I can get it out and and show you. Um, I'm gonna have to move this. This might be a longer than I expected. Um, I got it done up pretty tight because of the the die. See what I'm doing. Okay, that's that. And what I'll do is um, I'll take this off if I can. Get rid of this. Got to make handles for these things eventually. Um, so we'll take that off. Okay, everything is too big for these little lathes. Okay, um, so this is this is what I'm going to make the tapered dowel from. Okay, it's um, as usual. I've never got anything handy. I'm making it uh, extra long, and I've got centers at both ends. And the the working part is a uh, inch and five eight approximately. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this thread. I'm going to make up a bush so that I don't damage the threads. Um, and uh, I'm going to put a bush in there. And hold it probably in the fore jaw to get it running through. Uh, I've got center at this end and what I what I made up was I was trying to make up some um, a contour absorber uh, unit for this lathe and what I came up with was was this unit here um, which has the dovetails inside and at the bottom there's screwed on a, a template that I machined on the lathe on the mill uh, with CNC. I milled it out of a, a thin piece of old stock that I had and it's got a one degree taper on it. Okay, so that is going to is going to replace the tailstock 
part and this is going to slide on where the tailstock comes off and then that will be moved along here and it will be positioned in the right place and now I have a one degree taper um, I could have done it with a top slide but I, I tried to make some ball handles with this unit and I wasn't too successful it needs some modifying to get it working really good um, so anyway this fits on that sliding block that the tailstock is on and it slides on and you lock it and the unit that I made was um, this unit here um, oh that way okay this unit here is is what I made it's it's a cast steel and it's on a dovetail and it's nice and snug um, there's no jibs in there at all it's it's uh, size for size and so it's got this follower on the end and that follower is going to it's going to run along the taper the template and as it as it moves along this right hand section of this unit is bolted down to the tops to the cross slide and this pushes up against the edge of the template and follows it as you as you move the carriage along it follows the edge of the template and it moves it moves this and machines a taper on the on the part and so that's how I'm going to do the um, the dowel okay um, you can see so that's as far as I've got so far um, tomorrow I'll probably set this unit up on the cross slide and set up the tail part with the template on and uh, get this ready for machining a one degree taper on the on the shaft okay um it's 11 30 no it's 11 o'clock at night so I'm gonna I'm gonna quit now and um, uh, um, oh there's a there's a part that slides on here with the tool bit um, I don't know what I've done with that uh, I can't remember <laughs> I can't remember how it all goes together but I've got the parts oh yeah I take the part that slides on the front of the top slide with the tool bit and that fits down on there and I just tighten up a set screw in there and that lines everything up and I can move the uh, the tool bit up and down f to get center on the spindle so I'm gonna I'm gonna quit now I'm not very good at this so you probably have a good laugh um, I've got a couple of dowels in here in this base and they slide into the top of the t-slot and uh, locate this up square with the with the um, the table the cross slide so that's just another another feature okay uh, hope you enjoy hope you get something out of it um, thank you very much I'll say good night